Hi folks, um, welcome to uh, another in my series of fireside chats and it's a brave new world. We've come into the 2000s, it's another millennium. Is that the second millennium? No, yeah, it's the second slash third millennium, but we're here. Uh, nothing blew up, nothing broke down, computers all carried on working and we're raring to go. Entering the... Uh, 2000s, um, Wargaming for me has changed again. The uh, club that we were meeting in, which was uh, a sort of a village hall, uh, became too expensive. There were not enough of us to make it worthwhile. And um, one of the lads was um, on the committee, as I say, <laughs> and he couldn't keep that job up. So obviously the price we were getting, reduced price, became a more expensive commercial price. So um, we stopped doing that. Um, plus we were down to sort of four or five of us. Uh, so we then went to meeting around one of those houses. Um, and that was three or four of us most of the time. Sometimes only two of us. Um, but that's, uh, that's how we started the early 2000s. Um, and in with the 2000s I had uh, carried on painting that I'd started in the 1990s. Um, I was painting a lot of AB miniatures. Um, the ACW uh, figures that Tony Barton designed were produced by Polly Oliver of uh, Polly Oliver Castings. <laughs> I don't know if anybody remembers her. Um, I also got to know uh, a guy called Mike Hickling. Now Mike was the main man for AB miniatures. He was um, War Game South, as he was then in those days. And I got on really well with Mike. Um, I hope he thinks I did. <laughs> um, but I like Mike a lot. I uh, went to see him a couple of times. Um, he taught me all about casting, uh, um, vulcanizing presses, how it's press and all the rest. Um, yeah, I'm very, uh, very educational. Um, so I started painting up lots and lots of Napoleonics. I mean, AB, I think they possibly still are at the top of the range for 15mm or 18mm as it was. But um, the Anthony Barton, um, the AB figures, were just were wonderful to paint, wonderful to paint. And I spent lots of money with Mike painting up figures and selling them on. Um, all nationalities. Um, Obviously, the Napoleonics. Um, I never got into the World War II uh, that um, AB were doing, that uh, Barton produced. It wasn't my sort of thing. The 20 mil scale is nothing. But yeah, so far, a good part of the 2000s, um, I was painting Napoleonics, going to shows and selling them. My children are now sort of into their late teens, so it wasn't as bad. Um, I was able to go along. Sometimes the wife came with me to these shows and I would just go and sell figures. She might go shopping for the day, walk around the town wherever we were, if it was a town. Um, and I would uh, sort of hang around the hall, look and see what's going on. My figures would sometimes be sold on trade stands, but other times I'd sell them on bring and buys. Worked um, just as well. Um, gaming wise, um, obviously I'm from last week, if you recall, I bought lots of the 40 mil ACW, so I was also busily painting for myself 40 mil ACW, uh, and that was wonderful. Totally different. So I've got the two ends of the spectrum. I'm painting 40 mil ACW for myself, and I'm painting 15 mils to sell to support wargaming. <laughs> Uh, weird, but uh, yeah, that's what I was doing so for myself. That, and obviously continuing now with um, 28 mil uh, figures, collecting armies, more and more armies. Um, some, some, or probably many, I still have. Um, uh, yeah, so that's where we were in the uh, in the early part of uh, the uh, 2000s. Uh, as to the conventions, I had stopped going to the um, War Games convention circuit because uh, I wasn't playing competition games. Obviously, seventh edition has gone by the wayside. Uh, I wasn't into DBA or DBM, so um, that wasn't uh, wasn't my gig. What I did notice with the show circuit was uh, a strange phenomenon. 
known uh, or called the um, car boot phenomena. Um, in the 80s and 90s, when you'd go to a war games show, um, they would be all day shows. Strange for some of you people who, who used to go to shows nowadays, but um, in the uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, if a show started at 10 o'clock till 5 o'clock, you were there till then. Most, most people will be staying till 4, half past 4, 5 o'clock. Um, trying to pick up the last of their bargains uh, before the traders pack up and go home. But I think it possibly started in the late 90s, but definitely in the 2000s. Um, the car boot phenomenon, as it was called, because, as you know, with car boots, they might open at 6 o'clock in the morning, but the uh, the punters are wanting to... Sorry, the punters. The uh, people with the cars are wanting to go home at lunchtime, which I always found weird. And this transferred over to the shows. So you'd go to a war game show, uh, which would start at 10 o'clock, so you'd queue up to get in. I'd have arms full of... or boxes full of figures to uh, put and bring and buy us. Um, by one o'clock, the shows were often dead. You think, what? I mean, there were still a few people about, but it it was it was a gradual thing, but it was noticeable. So traders were then packing up to go home at three o'clock, half past two, two o'clock. I think one of the records, um, Andy at Last Valley, if anyone knows him, he used to hold the record for being the first away. Andy would often sell a lot of what he had and then decided it just wasn't worth hanging around and he'd be packing up at one o'clock, ready to go home. Well, if you think the show had only been over for two to three hours and you've got all these poor display guys trying to put on display games and there's, there's no one around. Um, the halls are empty and this is what was happening. So lots of traders were noticing this and uh, from me speaking to them, several of them were saying, it's just not worth the effort of going to shows. Um, you know, you can understand that, I suppose. Um, and with that, uh, well, it happened with me, because I was often selling things on a bring and buy. The bring and buys wouldn't start paying out till sort of four o'clock. So you were having to hang around for another two or three hours after most of the punters have gone, which is my customers. Obviously, people are going to buy things on the bring and buy. Um, I was hanging around waiting to cash up anything that I sold on the bring and buy. Um, they even started dropping that down, so they then would settle up from three th three o'clock onwards. That sort of thing um, happened at some of the shows. And then all things changed, as things do in the decade. We now got to the the great crash. What's that? Two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Um, things really changed. The shows were just not worth going to. You could not sell figures. Obviously, people weren't going to shows, or not as much. Obviously, some people were still going to shows, but so noticeable. You know, you'd, I'd paint up a lot of figures. Um, again, these shows, I'm saying a lot of shows. It would be several, two or three months apart. Um, often, a lot of shows in the winter, and nothing much in the summer or um, middle of the year. So, I paint up boxes of, um, I'm talking of armies now, 100, 150 pieces. Um, mainly Napoleonics now, the ACW had gone, I don't know whether Polly Oliver packed up, but um, I stopped doing the ACW, obviously they weren't selling, um, so it was all AB 15 mils, um, but they virtually stopped selling at the shows, you just, you couldn't give them away, you dropped the price down, you dropped the price down, uh, my standard hadn't, um, hadn't lessened, well I hope it hadn't yeah. lessened. So, yeah, that's where we get to with the uh, end of the decade, first decade of the millennium. Still gaming, still playing around a mate's house. Um, he's one of the, the guys' house we went to has moved, uh, not too far away, so we're all going around his house. Uh, there's still only three slash four of us. Um, the shows, I'd stopped going to the shows. The odd one I would go to, but it, you know, not taking uh, figures to sell because it, it just wasn't worth it. Very noticeable. Um, you couldn't sell them on mail order or, or at shows. You could if they were cheap, but I, there's no point in me painting for nothing. Um, the idea of the painting and selling was to, to get a bit of extra cash for the family and uh, to support the hobby. Um, you know. 
40 mils and 28 mils are expensive. Um, family life's expensive, as you guys know. But um, yeah, that's where we get to with the end of the decade, I think. Okay, so 10 years have gone by in a flash. <laughs> um, we're still gaming. We're still playing 28 mil ancients, 40 mil ACW. In the main, that's what we're doing. Um, so I'll end it there for now. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for me listening to me ramble on. And uh, bye for now.